But here we are, it's September the 13th and uh, <clears throat> I'm looking at a really, really damp hill. The cloud is very low, uh, it's particularly wet up there. We haven't had a great deal of rain, but it's that sort of misty uh, drizzle that actually gets you a lot wetter than you ever think uh, is possible. So I'm just having a look down here in the Vale and these are some cover crops that we planted um, a month ago. Uh, this is straight into spring barley. And uh, this is an interesting mix in here. We've got uh, some stubble turnips and some um, mustard in there. And there's also some fodder radish as well interspersed with uh, the spring barley volunteers. Uh, the field's actually split. If I just walk this way very slightly, uh, this is the mix that I was just telling you about. And about another six or seven metres on from here, we lose the mustard and the fodder radish and we go straight into uh, stubble turnips. And uh, the reason for that is A, it's going to be an interesting little trial just to see. The plan is to whip the sheep over here to give it a very light grazing later on in the year before going into spring beans. Um, <clears throat> but if we look over here, uh, you can just make out the sort of castle effect of strips of maize. It's one of our partridge drives down here. So the mustard will effectively create a much larger game cover and the idea of having the turnips further away from that cover is that that'll be a much shorter crop so the partridges actually uh, won't hang around in there quite so much. <clears throat> around the edge of the field we've got unharvested um, headlands as part of our uh, stewardship agreement and um, so they didn't receive any fertiliser, um, any, uh, any herbicides and um, that'll just stay there as, uh, as quite a nice wildlife feature and there's a grass margin on the far side of that against the hedge. So uh, this would be really interesting to see how this develops, whether we can use these sort of cover crops, not just for the soil benefits. So uh, we've got sort of fumigation effects from the mustard. Uh, the fodder radish is providing a nice big taproot um, to go down and bust up any compaction. And then we've just got organic matter creation really uh, from the sort of the barley volunteers, which I think I'm gonna leave. Um, Slightly concerned about the green bridge effect and maybe that's harbouring aphids that can carry barley yellow dwarf virus into the wheat. Um, but I don't know how much of a, a major issue that's going to be with deter um, as a seed dressing. But the crop's coming on really, really well. It's growing, it's growing quite well. It hasn't received any kind of nitrogen, so this is just mopping up <coughs> residual nitrogen, uh, capturing sunlight. Not that there's much today. And, uh, and converting all that into uh, organic matter which will either sort of green manure back into the crop, just drill straight into this. Um, it'll be feeding all the worms, the soil mycorrhizae and fungi and bacteria. And uh, hopefully <coughs> that'll help the bean yields next year. That's the plan. So we'll see how we get on.